Before getting to the recording stage of creating your course, you might have thought, it's simple, just turn on the camera and read my script. Now that you've actually gotten into it, you're realizing it's a lot more involved. You've got to set up your camera, microphone, lights, a teleprompter, make sure your files are organized, software, and what if you mess up? Or what if the camera's out of focus or your hair is bad? Before it's all said and done, it can feel a lot more complicated and intimidating. In this video, I wanna help you take what can be a complex process and simplify it so you can feel confident with your setup and record your course with ease. Let's get into it. Hello creators, I'm Ben Tolson from Podia where we empower creators like you to make a living doing what you love. Once you've outlined and scripted your course, it's time to talk to your camera and make it real. If you haven't outlined or scripted your course yet, go check out these videos first so you can set yourself up for success in this step of the process. We're going to take the recording process and break it down into three distinct parts, pre-work, setup, and filming. Let's talk about pre-work first. Some of the most important work actually starts before we turn the camera on. For our pre-work, we're gonna look at three things. Branding. When you hear the word branding, you might think of a logo or colors, but a brand is much more than that. Believe it or not, your course has a brand, even if you haven't given it one. The course subject, your delivery method, the sales page for the course, any social media marketing you've done, even your style of writing or speaking all become a part of how your students perceive you, and that is your brand. Large companies spend a lot of money trying to purposefully shape this. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but there are some things you can do to be intentional about shaping your brand. Try to think about your student's experience. Look at the setting where you plan to record. Maybe even look at what you plan to wear. Is there anything that doesn't fit the brand you're trying to put forth or that might distract your student or keep them from being able to focus? Most of the time, your natural setting and your personal style will fit perfectly with your course material, but it's good to give this some consideration before you turn the camera on. File organization. Think about how you'll organize your course. If you've completed the course outline template, you already have a great framework for how you'll structure your folders and your files. The more organized you can be in the early stages, the easier you'll make it for yourself in the future when it's time to edit and publish your course. I recommend a file hierarchy that follows this structure, course title, module name, lesson name, and then name your file with the same information like this. Now you've got an organized file system to put everything into as you record. A note here about files. Make sure you've got the storage you need on your computer and other storage media for your cameras so you've got everything you need to roll once you're set up. Prep for delivery. We covered this step in our video about scripting, but in case you haven't already done so, make sure your script is properly formatted and easy to read. If you plan to use a teleprompter, you'll want to remove any extra formatting and break your script down into one to three sentence sections so it's easy for you to track your place in the script as you record. On to the second part, setup. Now it's time to set up your studio. But Ben, I don't have a studio. From now on, I want you to think about the space where you're recording as your studio. The point of this is to help you be thoughtful about where you're setting up your camera, what's in the background, how the space sounds, etc. For example, my setup in here, the acoustics aren't that great and it's a little bit distracting. This is going to be your sacred course recording space for the duration of the recording phase, so treat it with care. We're going to start by setting up our camera. If you're familiar with some of the more advanced controls, this is a great opportunity to check your settings and tweak things as needed. If not, that's okay. You can just use the automatic settings on your camera. In a future video, we'll get into more specific camera and lighting techniques, but for now, we'll keep it simple. There are three things you do want to check. Where are you in the frame? You wanna make sure you are framed properly. If you're zoomed too far out, you'll look tiny on the screen and it'll be difficult for your students to stay engaged. If you're too close, it can be uncomfortable. And what's that in your teeth? You wanna frame yourself from about mid chest up and keep a bit more space above your head. This is an optimal distance and allows hand gestures to be seen. You also wanna keep your head in the upper half of the screen, but not too close to the top. Are you in focus? You might be wondering how you can check focus and get yourself in focus at the same time. I have what I call a focus buddy. Let me introduce you to him, hold on. There he is, got my focus buddy. I put it in the spot where I plan to stand and then I make sure the focal point which is this part right here, is aligned with where my eyes will be. 
More on that in a moment. Then I go to the camera and I make sure it's in focus. It's already in focus, so I'm not gonna do that. You always wanna make sure your eyes are the most focused part of your face because when people are watching, that's usually the part of the face they'll watch the most. How is the light? We're not gonna set up the lights just yet, but we do want to look to see if the natural room light is too bright or too dark. If there's a lot of natural light, you can get away with adding less light. If it's a little darker, you might want to add more light. Now that your camera is set up, it's time to set up your lights. For this part, we're going to set up two to three lights using the three-point lighting method. Let me give you a brief overview of how the three-point lighting method works. The first light is called the key light, and it's the brightest of the three lights. It looks like this. Looks kind of dramatic, doesn't it? Sometimes this can be natural light coming through a window or an artificial light that you set up. It's generally set up pointing toward the subject at about a 45 degree angle. The second light is called the fill light, and it's not quite as bright as the key light, and it looks like this. Its job is to reduce the amount of shadows on the half of your face the key light isn't pointing toward, while still allowing some contour and depth to your face. It's generally set up on the opposite side of the key light facing the subject at a 45 degree angle. A third and optional light is called the rim light, and this is what the rim light looks like. It's kind of ominous. I'm gonna be honest with you right now, this light was supposed to be on the whole time and I actually forgot to turn it on until just now. This light is usually set up above and behind the subject and puts a rim of light around the subject to separate them from the background. The next thing you'll set up for your studio is the microphone. Getting a clear recording of your voice is one of the most important aspects of recording your video. People can be forgiving of low video quality as long as the audio is nice and clear, but even if your video is beautiful, bad audio can be a huge distraction. If you're using a desk or stand mounted mic or a shotgun mic, you don't necessarily have to set it up outside the frame. It just depends on the aesthetic you're going for. If you want it out of frame, just make sure it's as close as possible and that the diaphragm of the microphone, the part that captures the sound, is pointed towards you. Of course, you can always use a lapel microphone as a quality, distraction-free solution. The last thing you need to set up for recording is your teleprompter or some tool for reading your script as you record. A teleprompter can be as complicated and expensive as a full-blown teleprompter system, or it can be as simple as an app on your smartphone or tablet pointing to a beam splitter glass, which is just an angled piece of glass that the camera can see through that also reflects what is shown on your smartphone or tablet. You probably already have a smartphone or tablet device, and if so, you can download a teleprompter app that will allow you to import your script. My favorite is PromptSmart. This app can import your script from Google Drive, Dropbox, and other cloud sharing services, and it also has a feature that can listen to your voice and automatically scroll as you speak. You can usually get a beam splitter glass that is compatible with a smartphone or tablet online for just a couple hundred bucks. Once you set up your teleprompter, you just wanna do a quick run through test to make sure you feel comfortable. You also wanna check your camera again to make sure that no part of the teleprompter is showing up on the screen. If you don't have a beam splitter glass, you can also set your script up on a smartphone or tablet just above the camera lens, still using a teleprompter app. This can be a little bit tricky and it may be more obvious that you're reading from a script, but it can still get the job done. Once the lights, camera, and microphone, and script are ready to go, it's time to press record. Seriously though, triple check and make sure that you're actually recording. The extra practice is nice, but nothing is worse than getting several minutes into your script before realizing you weren't recording anything. Okay, I don't wanna stress you out, so here are some tips for breezing through the delivery phase of the recording. Relax. Take a couple of slow, deep breaths before and between takes. It's amazing how much better and relaxed it can make you feel. That'll come through in how you speak, and it'll also help your students feel at ease. Also, keep some water handy and take breaks as needed to rehydrate. Take it one section at a time. You can always edit later, so don't stress about getting the entire lesson recorded flawlessly. You can do different takes of sections until you feel confident, and then move on. Keep your students' results in mind. It's easy to start focusing on how you sound, whether or not the take you just did was good enough, or how dry your mouth is. You'll actually be your most relaxed when you can take your mind off of these things and keep in mind why you're doing this in the first place. Try to focus on how your course will make life better for your student. 
Create separate recordings for each lesson. Between lessons, stop and restart the recording. This will give you a chance to review your material and take a quick break if you need it. This can also make it easier to organize your files once you've finished recording. Don't feel like you have to do it all at once. It's ideal if you have a place where you can leave everything set up, but if not, just keep a few things in mind. Mark the position of your equipment so you can set everything up as it was originally. Capture and save your settings. Write down any specific settings you may have on your camera and on your lights. Mark the height of your camera and light stands and take note of the angles of your lights. Remember what you're wearing and take a picture of your background so you can keep your look consistent between filming sessions. I hope these steps make recording a breeze for you and that you're that much closer to sharing your course with the world. In this video, I gave you an overview of setting up your studio for recording. Is there anything you would like to hear more in depth? What parts of the recording process would you like me to nerd out on? Let me know below in the comments. If you found this video useful and want more relevant content like this, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can be the first to know when we post a new video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.